Hey everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and today we're starting up a new series, and what this is going to do is take you from beginning to end of a watercolor, and this is the, the most important thing that you need to know when it comes to applying and starting your watercolor and your painting. And the most important thing is getting your drawing onto your sheet of watercolor paper, get it on there good. I mean, your, your drawing has to be looking really, really right on. And most of the time we're working from a photograph. And so the photograph, we're not working outside. That's a whole other thing. When we work plain air, we have to do the drawing onto our paper. And so that's a little bit different. But when we're in our classroom and when you're in my classroom, what you're gonna be doing is applying your pencil line onto your paper, to your watercolor paper, and then we paint. And so this drawing on your paper has to be number one, most important thing to look correct, look correct, all right? So how do you do that? Well, one is just to take a pencil and draw. And then you take your need a rubber eraser and then just erase when you need to erase, right? I need a rubber eraser and pencil, boom, you put it on there. And that's with many years of experience, I can do that, I can go on there and just draw it on from what I see from the photograph. And when I'm plein air painting, I can also see it from the distance and I apply it. And so that takes some skill and you need to work on that if you're gonna be going plein air painting. And even when you're a student in my class um, on and on, I do sooner or later try to do a little bit of drawing in your sketchbook and just try to draw without having to trace. But for my classes, what I do is there's a couple of different ways of tracing your image, which is your photograph onto your paper. And one of them is by transferring it with transfer paper, excuse me, but you transfer it with transfer paper. And what is transfer paper? There's graphite paper and transfer paper. This is kind of a carbon paper and called transfer paper. And then there's another one called graphite paper where there's graphite on this side and you put the, the dark side or the graphite side down onto the paper, right? So this, would, this is transfer paper, it's not graphite paper. So this is a little bit darker and will apply and not erase. Now, if you're wanting to do an erasing your pencil lines, you'd use graphite paper. It's the same type of thing. It's black and one side is a little bit shinier and you put the shiny part down onto your paper and then take your image, apply that image on top of there. Let's see if I got an image here around anywhere. <laughs> no, I don't, but you apply the image. Here, I'll show you. You apply the image. So here's an image. You apply that down onto the paper and then you just start tracing, right? Trace around and then that'll apply it to there. So basically you just press onto your paper. And the thing is you need to get the paper or your, your, your photograph has to be the side of your painting. So this, I find that um, quarter sheet, if you take, take your photo or your digital file, take it to like a office supply store and office max. Um, if there's one, a printer in your area that does uh, 11 by 17, which is called legal or no, um, tabloid size, tabloid size, 11 by 17. And so you have it a little bit smaller and you make your image black and white. I like to make my image black and white and then make sure that it's not bigger than your paper. And that's the exact size of your paper, your um, watercolor paper, which is kind of a good thing to do because this is, um, this paper usually ends up being 15 by 10, I think like that, 10 by 15 or 11 by 15. And so if you make it anywhere from 10, to 14 it's a pretty good size and you get in there even nine is okay and you put it on there and then you you can trace it you can draw it and that way you can at least um, get a good drawing because it's all about the drawing and if you cannot do the drawing from your from your imagination or draw it from tracing or copying from the image freehanding it then um, you know it's gonna take you longer yes and um, but in time you want to be able to do that because it's not only that you get a good drawing on there, but it also shows you three dimension. It kind of gives you a three dimensional image in your head, what, what um, the image looks like, the pencil lines. So that's one way is taking the transfer paper. And like I just said, taking it down. And if you don't have a printer that does 11 by 17, some printers can stack it or what do they call that where you stack it on top. So the prints are done on two um, eight and a half by 11 sheets. So it, um, binds it together and it prints with the one side out and the other side. Look at to see if your printer does that. Um, I'm not that up on that <laughs> technology, but read your printer and also maybe go online, go on, go onto YouTube and say, how do, how do I stack, stack my image that's larger than 11 by 17 
or that it is 11 17 on an eight and a half by 11 and double do it on double because it'll print the one side out and print the other side and you can actually splice it together and then just put it down on your black paper and then just trace it there's also tracing paper but see when you're using tracing paper if you use like a tracing paper like you have a tracing paper and you can see through your image you still need your size image you still need your size image now the only time you don't need the photograph the digital photo to be the size of your picture is when you're doing it through a projector and there are many different kinds of projector and so let me show you a couple of projectors and um this is one this is a small projector this is a um artograph makes projectors that you can take a photograph and actually a photograph not a digital <laughs> photograph not something that's digital this is basically you'd have to have an actual photograph like the old days and so this I think is a kind of out of date taking an image like this and then putting the let me just hold that one second putting the picture underneath here you put it in lay the picture flat on the table and then you put this this contraption on top of it and it projects it onto a wall now it has to be a dark room usually so you don't get a chance to do it in a light so it's pretty much has to be dark and you have to have a photograph so that's one of the ways and they make a bigger one of this um so there's a bigger one this is a bigger projector now what you do is you put the image on top come on where's my there it is come here. you put the this flaps open and you put the image on top the photograph again it's a photograph you put it on top and it projects it onto a wall um and so you have to tape it to the wall your paper and make sure another thing is is that this makes it bigger and so if you're on just a small image a lot of times it doesn't trace it very well and so that's the there now they do have ones that are also they call this one a copycat it's <laughs> people use it for putting an image in here now the image goes up here and there's a little flap and the image goes onto there and then it projects it down onto your tabletop and you have to figure out which way it is because you're going upside down but then you um trace it on here and again this is kind of tough because it has to go up and down for the thickness and bigness of the picture like how large is your picture going to be is it going to be really large small you know is it going to be smaller is it going to be wide and it goes up and down to adjust that and then it also you have to get it um, focused so these projectors i think are kind of out of date because we're all using digital photos nowadays and so get yourself a digital projector instead of one of these artograph type ones where you need a photograph so you have to print it out first anyways and so it kind of makes a double you know thing so i think these things are kind of out of date right now so if you go with a regular projector digital projector and that's something like this and i actually have one right here it's um I, you can get them on amazon you can buy cheaper ones this one even takes on this one has a cd you can put a cd in there which you know i you don't need that you don't need a cd because you can use a flash drive so I've, i got this one you can tell it's a smaller version see my hand my hand size of my hand and so it's you know a smaller one it has a place that I, I can put it on a tripod i can put it into a room now what how do i get my photographs into there i have all different kinds of ways of doing that i can either do a computer you know the vga um a computer uh, hdmi a flash drive the actual um card you know you can put a card in there and so there's also an av cable that's av though that's um you know so basically you take a little flash drive put it in there or your your card your um, camera card if it has that if it's that kind of bigger one now and so there's many different ways of getting it in there and then this one's a pretty good one now the old the old projectors they used to have the bulbs in there the really hot bulbs that were very expensive those you don't have to worry about anymore this is an led it doesn't get too hot at all you can run it for all day if you want and it actually is in a, in a pretty lit up room you can actually use it I recommend that you do it in a darker room um, but the only problem with this thing too is if you're tracing um, you can you can take your tri tripod and some of these tripods have arms so you can turn it sideways and put it on tripod on here and then face it down onto the floor and then tripod can go up and down for how big you want it now the problem is with something like this it needs to be at least a foot or two feet away and so it may not get small enough for your paper because you're projecting this is making it enlarging it so if you need to have it um, where the the image is kind of small like quarter sheet you're gonna have to make sure that your file in your file it's a little bit smaller so that when you project it out it doesn't get so big that it's too big for the paper and it can't get it doesn't focus 
unless it's maybe like two feet away from the wall or from the ground. And so that gives you the size and usually it's almost half a sheet. And so it all depends on what you're, what size you're doing, but it does get in focus when you get to two feet. So you just have to make sure your file is, you know, you make it small so that you, when you project it up, it's, it's still small enough to be on your quarter sheet. So that's the only problem with something like this. It's great for uh, murals or for big things and you can put it right on your wall. And again, now they also have these things that you can use to put your phone. They can, um, like an HDMI thing that goes into your phone. And so you can use your phone, take a cable up from your phone into this machine. I think there's like an HDMI or, or a USB that you can go from your phone into there. And then you can just, um, I haven't had any luck with that yet, um, but I've known a couple of people that have been able to do that, take their phone and hook it up there. But I, what I, I do is I just take it to my computer, I take my flash drive and get it on there. And again, this is tracing. This is all about tracing. This is not about doing it freehand. This is, um, I need to get my students to somehow, and I can't um, make them do a really good drawing or learn how to do a really good drawing freehand. So there's times when I need you to, to have it really good, especially if you're doing portraits. Now a landscape or the trees, that's something that you can do that freehand. But when you're doing things that are very important to get it to look just like the object and you don't have a lot of experience, you're a beginner, I say just trace it for now and just try to get it onto your paper. And I would say the easiest way again would be to use that, that um, transfer paper and go to your dealer or your, your um, office max and get the image printed on black and white. Uh, black and white is like 25 cents and make it, 11 by, um, make it 11 by 15, the image size on 11 by 17 paper. That's usually the easiest. Um, let me go one more thing here is that you can also have this thing called a Lucy. Um, this is a Lucy, I've seen this online and I have ordered a few of these images because I want to see what these things, how they work. So I did order one of these and they're very expensive. Um, I found a, a knockoff of it on Amazon that's like 89. It's the same type of thing. Um, that I'm gonna try and see. And there's even a, a smaller version where it's a really small little thing on this little pole. And so I'm gonna try that out for my students and see how it works and stuff. Anything to get you to do the drawing and get it onto your paper really well is gonna be a good thing. So I, I got one of these, I'm gonna try it out. I've heard some people say, some students say they never been able to use one of these. And so um, we'll see, we'll see. Um, another thing I saw was uh, this, um, what do they call these? These are called a pantogram, pantograph. And um, it basically it's like a lot of woodworkers use it and stuff to get the drawing from one image and then get it onto something else. So I, I bought, got one of these and I'm gonna see how it works. <laughs> I'm not gonna um, say anything about it yet because I have not tried it. Um, I know that a lot of lettering people will letter you know, they'll have it, the actual lettering and they'll go on one side of the paper and then they'll just, you know, go over and then it does it the same on their thing. So it kind of, this one side does the same as the other side. And so I'm not sure, we'll see. Again, I'm trying to find a way for the students in my class to make good drawings. And until I get you that class, I'm gonna start hopefully do a class one day where it's gonna take you 66 days and we draw every day and even then, it took me many, many years to get to ability where I'm working from my imagination and I can draw pretty much anything I've seen. To get there, it's gonna take a little bit longer than just a couple weeks or a <laughs> couple um, months even to get really good drawing skills. And so I know there's a lot of artists out there who actually use artographs and these projectors and they're winning some major awards. So. I, I don't want you to think that this is cheating. It's not cheating because there's a many artists out there that are using it. If you can draw, it just helps out your tracing. Um, I've traced things for myself. A lot of times when I'm in a hurry, though I can draw pretty much anything that I've seen out of my imagination. I don't even need to use a photograph anymore. And so I want to get to that point, but there's days when I use a projector myself, if there's a time limit, or if I want to make sure it looks exactly like the image, the photograph. When I'm outdoors, I can't use it because I've got you know, the outdoors. And so there I just play it by ear. I just do what I have to do. Um, there are these other images, things that you can use outdoors, like that thing I was talking about, the Lucy. I'm going to try it and see what it works like, but definitely sketch in your sketchbook as much as you can. That's one of the ways of learning how to just sketch and draw is to use your sketchbook and just do a lot of drawing in there. Let me think if there's one more thing here. I think that's about it. Oh, there's these, um, there's these <laughs> image where they have a glass and this glass and, and you put your 
image on one side and I know there's a like a, a plexiglass that goes on this way so you look at it through the plexiglass and you draw underneath the plexiglass same thing like these Lucy's it's basically a reflection on a piece of glass then then you kind of drag that image with your mind into the paper it shows it not on the it shows it on the plexiglass but then you draw beyond that and and the plexiglass is where you're drawing I'll, I'll, once, I, once I get one of those, I'll show you, I'll try to do a little bit more on that. But for now, I would say the easiest way, again, to get it on your paper is get yourself some transfer paper. And I will put all this into the description where you can get this like transfer paper or these digital um, projectors. I'll put that all in the, into the transcript or the um, details in the description of the video. And I'll put all links in there so you can get this. This, uh, um, again, is transfer paper, not graphite paper. Graphite paper erases, so, but it's very messy, the graphite paper. This is not as messy, but it's darker and it doesn't erase. So whatever you put down, nothing dark that you want to make sure that you want to erase later. Um, so don't put anything dark in there. But very simple thing to do. The only problem is, is that you need to blow up your image, black and white, and make it to a size of what your painting is going to be. And... Um, and again, don't feel like you're cheating. I'd rather, yes, it, um, it is basically putting in, um, tracing your paper, but I need you to get that drawing onto there. It's more important than, I, I can teach you how to do the watercolor and get that all right. And But if you're drawing underneath your watercolor is awful, then your painting is still gonna be awful. You need to get that drawing on there somehow. And, um, there's many artists nowadays that do that where they just, and professional artists, and, and they make these machines and these artists use it. And so they just trace, basically trace it, especially a lot of the hyper-realists where they, um, you know, they do some of the imagery that's like the crystal bowls and stuff where they need to get it so perfect, like the crystal bowl itself and the photograph, that they just use a projector. And so don't be afraid of using a projector. You still have to paint it. You still have to learn how to, Draw. Sooner or later, you're going to have to learn how to draw a little bit so that you can see it three-dimensionally in your mind. And um, But this is my little tip. And for all you beginners, please, let's get our drawing right. And if you need to ask any more questions, go to my website at beckerart.net. And there's a place you can email me. And if you have uh, questions about this again down the road, just email me and I will answer them as, as quickly as possible. <laughs> and so have fun with this and find yourself a... Um, uh, either a printer that does 11 by 17 or if you have 8 by 11 you can you can stack the images like 8 and half 11 and make two sheets and make one picture that's fine too i don't like to have everybody draw um eight and a half by 11 that's kind of small to do an eight and a half by 11, eight and a half by 11 painting of each thing because that's the only size your printer prints out for tracing and if that's a purpose and you want to draw bigger and you can get yourself a projector that's another way again Let's get a drawing right. And always always have a sketchbook with you if you are trying to learn how to draw because it's, it's the way of learning how to draw. It's just doing it, a lot of doing. And even when you're tracing, um, when you do a lot of tracing, you start realizing what it is that's most important in your drawing. So I don't find that tracing is that such a bad thing, um, whatever it takes, all right? So until Thursday night when we do our paint-alongs, I'll see you then. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.